We love watching two opposing forces clash on screen, and we've been doing it for decades. There's something special about when two ideas or super-powered fists make contact with each other, with neither holding back on either side. Some of these rivalries get intense, and anime brings us a lot of draw-dropping fights between rivals that'll make you cheer and drop your snacks. But before we start looking at all the most incredible anime matchups under the rising sun, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss any of our anime videos. Goku vs. Vegeta Let's kick things off with a bar for anime fights. When people say anime, these two are practically the universal faces, and who could argue? Goku and Vegeta have been battling and challenging each other for 30 years, and we've been screaming alongside them for just as long. <laughs> Stop fighting and just be friends, you two! Their rivalry began in Dragon Ball Z after Raditz was defeated by Goku and Piccolo. He warns them of two more Saiyans coming to Earth to finish the job he failed. After a year of training and being revived, Goku leads the Z fighters against the invaders Nappa and Vegeta. Goku makes short work of Nappa, and then it's on between the two. We see Goku unleash the Kaioken against Vegeta, which led to attacks between Goku's Kamehameha wave, and Vegeta's energy blast recognized as the Gallic Gun. After this, these two became allies for some time throughout the Frieza and Android saga, but in the Buu saga, we saw a short rematch between the two, after Vegeta was influenced by the Majin Seal, though he himself disagreed. They've dueled many times throughout Dragon Ball Super, but without any world-ending stakes. At this point, they're sparring partners with each other, which makes sense because who else is going to be able to do it? I certainly don't want to fight him. I'm not doing it. Yusuke vs. Hiei Similar to another entry later in this video, we're introduced to another human who finds himself dealing with ghosts, demons, and a job he didn't see himself having the day before in Yu Yu Hakusho. That's right, we're talking about Yusuke, and one of the demons we're referring to is Hiei. Yusuke originally didn't find himself concerned with any worries of the spirit world. In fact, Yusuke was a rough street kid who was a solid delinquent. That is, until he sacrificed his life to save a child and impressing those who could bring him back to life. He's resurrected and keeps his life, but also gains the respectability of becoming a spirit spirit detective, solving demonic mysteries. Hiei is a fire demon who we first meet after he and some of his demon friends are stealing artifacts from the human world. This is where they get into their first fistfight. Yusuke seems to almost lose after Hiei transforms, but he wins using his trusty spirit gun. Becoming friends, they trust to keep each other in check in their band of four that we see, but they'll still fight from time to time, with Hiei always making Yusuke's power and skills rise to the occasion. Well, that's what good friends do, right? Natsu and Grey If you think of the Robert Frost poem when we mention fire and ice, then congratulations, you still read books. However, if you thought of Natsu and Grey from Fairy Tale, then you're in good company. Natsu is one of the members of the Fairy Tale, a guild dedicated to magic and the mages within. It's also the strongest guild in the kingdom of Fiore that produces the mages which go off on jobs and adventures. Natsu is one of these mages. Pink hair clad, he uses a variety of fire attacks against his opponents. One of the opponents he uses this on is his rival Grey. Grey is the black haired Ice Mage who had a rivalry with Natsu since they were young. He's often seen as the cooler tempered one compared to Natsu, who has a fiery reckless attitude when it comes to certain situations. After being trapped by Daphne, Grey is told to beat Natsu as Daphne wants him. She uses the opportunity to settle he and Natsu's rivalry and the fight is on. They exchange powerful magical blows, with Natsu using his fire magic while Grey creates weapons using his ice magic. Ultimately, Natsu gains the upper hand and finishes him off with a fiery defeat. That certainly had to hurt Grey's ego being defeated with a guy with pink care. Ash vs. Gary You know that guy from your hometown that always seems to be one step ahead of you? The well-connected jerk face? Yeah, that guy. Or what about that naive kid from where you grew up that constantly wants to be the very best, like no one ever was? Doo -doo -doo. Long-time rivals in the Pokemon world, it's Ash, Ketchum, and Gary Oak. Ash has somewhat been in Gary's shadow before either of them began their Pokemon journeys. Over the course of their times, both being trainers, Ash and Gary had many bouts, but Ash typically came up short in these battles. It's not that Ash is a horrible trainer, but Gary proved to make more attacks choices. For example, Gary evolves his starter during his time as a trainer. He turns his Eevee into a powerful Umbreon, while Ash keeps it classic with his Pikachu. Ultimately, Gary becomes a professor and changes some of his jerk face ways, but who knows? Maybe Ash will finally claim victory over Gary one day. Midoriya vs. Bakugo Superheroes, supervillains, and everything in between kinda run the world at the moment, don't they? Anime lovers have dipped their hands into the superhero world too, and we have something as beautiful as My Hero Academia. We mainly follow the adventures of a young man named Midoriya. In a world where people mostly have powers called quirks and become superheroes in the vein of a public servant, Deku is quirkless. This makes him the outlier at the superhero school until he starts making a name for himself under the tutelage of the world's strongest hero, All Might. One person who doesn't make things easy for Deku is Bakugo, who's 
Quirk can create fiery explosions out of his sweat. Bakugo has resentment towards the quirkless Deku. They eventually have a true one-on-one -on -one match during their exams. Deku is no longer quirkless at this point, now owning the all-for-one quirk that once belonged to All Might. He can now increase power into different parts of his body and unlocks 8% during his fight with Bakugo, but ultimately loses the fight to Bakugo. All Might explains that Deku and Bakugo have what each other both need to become great heroes, putting the two down a path of making each other better. Yugi vs. Kaiba It's a classic story of rich and powerful upper class taking arms against a small and mighty humble working class. And their choice of weapons? Dual monsters through playing cards, of course. The class of matchup between Yugi Muto and Sato Kaiba means only one thing, it's time to duel. While soon to be a king of games, Yugi was home unlocking the secret of Millennium Puzzle. Sato Kaiba was obsessing over completing his collection of blue eye white dragon cards. This leads him to the game shop that Yugi's grandfather Solomon owns. It's during this confrontation that spawns their first duel. With assistance from the Pharaoh within the Millennium Puzzle, Yugi defeats Kaiba by unleashing the game-ending card combination of Exodia the Forbidden One. This led to Kaiba forcing Yugi's hand in duel again during the Maximilian Pegasus Tournament. Desperate to save his little brother Mokubo's soul from Pegasus, Kaiba forces Yugi into losing or winning and killing Kaiba. Kaiba wins due to Yugi calling off the fatal attack. Their biggest duel was during the Battle City Tournament Finals. Yugi uses his Dark Paladin card for a final blow after defusing Kaiba's Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. The battle ended with Kaiba giving giving up his especially powerful Egyptian god card Obelisk the Tormentor to Yugi as part of the Battle City rules. We guess that makes Yugi king of games after all. Inuyasha vs. Seshomaru If you thought the only awesomely sought-after sword was the mighty Excalibur, then you'd definitely be wrong. In this world with magic, fights, and demon brothers from another mother, we can't help turn our eyes and drool over the half-demon Inuyasha and the full demon Seshomaru. This intense family feud all comes back to business affairs with their father Toga, the great dog demon, and his legendary sword Tesaiga. Seshomaru, being a full demon, wanted the power of the sword for himself. However, it wasn't good for him when he saw Kagome grab it and later Inuyasha. The sword responds to wielders who empathize with humans and have demon abilities, which sounds perfect for Inuyasha. Ever since then, they fought multiple times, with Seshumaru wanting the power of Tesaiga for himself. At one point in his desire for the sword, he loses his arm and has it replaced with a human arm by Naraku. Working with someone like Naraku, he wasn't playing around about Tesaiga. He eventually gives up his quest for the sword. He learns to wield his own sword, called Baku Saiga, that doesn't have the legacy of his father, or now Inuyasha. Their battles continued on, but the two brothers found a deeper understanding of their family issues, which was better in the long run. Alucard vs. Anderson This list is just full of demons and dark powers at work. And what's better than slaying some of those demons? In the world of Helsing, there are two names that make vampires shiver with fear, Alucard and Alexander Anderson. Alucard and Anderson represent both sides of the blood when it comes to demon slaying in the Helsing universe. Alucard is a vampire and is immensely strong one at that. In his experience, along with his natural talents, he has many supernatural abilities. He's endowed with super strength, speed, regeneration, generation, immortality, certain psionic abilities, and hypnosis, as well as some degrees of flight and supernatural senses, all alongside his signature Helsing Arms handgun. Anderson, a priest for the Vatican who fights Alucard, has many of these same abilities. He doesn't have the demonic powers, but he can use pages of the Bible to perform techniques. He's also quite skilled with the bayonet. The two finally do battle after Alucard defeats the Catholic army. He doesn't do well against Alucard at first, who blows off his arm, but the tides turn after Anderson uses Helena's nail, a tool that makes him strong like Alucard. He uses it to transform and nearly defeat Alucard, but Alucard powers through and removes the nail, finishing off Anderson. Alucard would have loved an honest defeat by Anderson, but you can't always get what you want, we suppose. Naruto vs. Sasuke Their rivalry goes all the way back to when they were children, and they're the latest to represent a long line of power opposition in the ninja world. One of the deepest rivalries in anime, we give you Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto and Sasuke both ended up on Squad 7 with Sakura after passing their ninja exam. After Sasuke passes with top marks, while Naruto passes due to special circumstances, they fostered making each other better throughout their time together. After a few minor bouts, they had their first high-stakes battle after Naruto tries to stop Sasuke from defecting from their home of Konoha. Although it drew out higher power from both of them, it was futile as Sasuke ended up still defecting from Konoha. After the time skip, we get a few more light battles between the two. There's the Squad 7 reunion fight, where Sasuke proves he's currently outclassing Naruto and Sakura. They also had a quick skirmish during the pain era leading up to the ninja war. Their final battle comes after the combined takedown of Kaguya, and Sasuke turns to destroy Konoha finally. Naruto steps in for one final showdown between the two. It ends with both of them losing their arms and Sasuke finally conceding. Who doesn't love best friends finally reuniting? Huh? 
Wow, those are some explosive fights. We can't wait to see how some of these rivalries progress. What's your favorite rivalry? Did we forget to put in your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more anime videos like this one. Thanks for watching.